Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to day 149 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be a host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading our Bibles in a year with just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Yes, you heard me right. Just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Please kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok. We are excited to have you here. Let's get started. Day 149, May 29th, 2022. 365 days Bible reading. Old Testament, 1 Samuel 24, 1 Samuel 25. New Testament, John 18, 25 to 40. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 68, verse 15 to 20. Old Testament NIV version, 1 Samuel 24, 1 to 22. David spares Saul's life. After Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 able young men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there and Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said, This is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up on notice and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Afterward, David was conscious, conscience stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay my hand on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My lord the king. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lay my hand on my Lord because he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but did not kill you. See that there is nothing in my hand to indicate that I am guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. I have not wronged you, but you are honing me down to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me. And may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me, but my hand will not touch you. As the old saying goes, from evil doers come evil deeds, so my hand will not touch you. Against whom was the king of Israel come out? Who are you pursuing? A dead dog? A flea? May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May he consider my cause and uphold it. May he vindicate me by delivering me from your hand. When David finished saying this, Saul asked, Is that your voice, David, my son? And he wept aloud. You are more righteous than I, he said. You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. You have just now told me about the good you did to me. The Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. When a, man, when a man finds his enemy, does he let them get away unharmed? May the Lord re reward you well for the way you treated me today. I know that you will surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands. Now, swear to me by the Lord that you will not kill off my descendants or wipe out my name from my father's family. So David gave his oath to Saul. Then Saul returned home. But David and his men went up to the stronghold. 1 Samuel 25 verse 1 to 44. David, Nabal, and Abigail. Now Samuel died and all Israel assembled and mourned for him. And they buried him at his home in Ramah. Then David moved down into the desert of Paran. A certain man in Mahon who had property there at Carmel was very wealthy. 
he had a thousand goats and three thousand sheep, which he was sharing in Carmel. His name was Nabal and his wife's name was Abigail. She was an intelligent and beautiful woman, but her husband was surely and mean in his dealings. He was a Calebite. While David was in the wilderness, he heard that Nabal was sharing sheep. So he sent ten young men and said to them, Go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. Now I hear that it is sheep sharing time. When your shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them, and the whole time they were at Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. Ask your own servants and they will tell you. Therefore, be favorable toward my men, since we come at a festive time. Please give your servants and your son David whatever you can find for them. When David's men arrived, they gave Nabal this message in David's name. Then they waited. Nabal answered David's servants, Who is this David? Who is the son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water and the meat I have slaughtered for my sharers and give it to men coming from who knows where? David's men turned around and went back. When they arrived, they reported every word. David said to his men, Each of you strap on your sword. So they did, and David strapped on his own as well. About 400 men went up with David, while 200 stayed with the supplies. One of the servants told Abigail, Nabal's wife, David sent messengers from the wilderness to give our master his greetings, but he hurled insults at them. Yet these men were very good to us. They did not mistreat us, and the whole time we were out in the field, near them nothing was missing. Night and day there were a wall around us, and the whole time we were herding our sheep near them. Now think it over and see what you can do, because disaster is hanging over our master and his whole household. He is such a wicked man that no one can talk to him abigail acted quickly she took 200 loaves of bread two skins of wine five dressed sheep five sayers of roasted grain a hundred cakes of raisins and 200 cakes of pressed figs and loaded them on donkeys then she told her servants go on ahead i will follow you but she did not tell her husband nabal as she came riding her donkey into a mountain ravine there were David and his men descending towards her, and she met him. David had just said, It's been useless, all my watching over this fellow's property in the wilderness so that nothing of his was missing. He has paid me back evil for good. May God deal with David, be it ever so severely, if by morning I live alive one male of all who belong to him. When Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed down before David with her face to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, Pardon your servant, my lord, and let me speak to you. Hear what your servant has to say. Please pay no attention, my lord, to that wicked man Nabal. He is just like his name. His name means fool, and folly goes with him. And as for me, your servant, I do not see the men my lord sent. sorry i'll take that again and as for me your servant i did not see the men my lord sent and now my lord as surely as the lord your god lives and as you live since the lord has kept you from bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hands may your enemies and all who are intent on harming my lord be like nabal and let this gift which your servant has brought to my lord be given to the men who follow you Please forgive your servant's presumption. The Lord your God will certainly make a lasting dynasty for my Lord, because you fight the Lord's battles, and no wrongdoing will be found in you as long as you live. Even though someone is pursuing you to take your life, the life of my Lord will be bound securely in the bundle of the living by the Lord your God. But the lives of your enemies he will hurl away as from the pocket of a sling. When the Lord has fulfilled for my Lord every good thing he promised concerning him and has appointed him ruler over Israel, 
my Lord will not have on his conscience the staggering burden of needless bloodshed or of having avenged himself. And when the Lord your God has brought my Lord's success, remember your servant. David said to Abigail, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. May you be blessed for your good judgment and for keeping me from bloodshed this day and from avenging myself with my own hands. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, who has kept me from harming you, if you had not come quickly to meet me, not one male belonging to Nabal would have been left alive by daybreak. Then David accepted from her hand what she had brought him and said, Go home in peace. I have heard your words and granted your request. When Abigail went to Nabal, he was in the house holding a banquet like that of a king. He was in high spirits and very drunk. So she told him nothing at all until daybreak. Then in the morning when Nabal was sober, his wife told him all of these things. And his heart filled him and he became like a stone. About ten days later, the Lord struck Nabal and he died. When David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Praise be to the Lord who has upheld my cause against Nabal for treating me with contempt. He has kept his servant from doing wrong and has brought Nabal's wrongdoing on his own head. Then David sent word to Abigail asking her to become his wife. His servants went to Carmel and said to Abigail, David has sent us to you to take you to become his wife. She bowed down with her face to the ground and said, I am your servant. And I'm ready to serve you and wash the feet of my Lord's servants. Abigail quickly got on a donkey and attended by five of her female servants, went with David's messengers and became his wife. David has, had also married Ahinoam of Jezreel and they both were his wives. But Saul had given his daughter, Michael, David's wife, to Paltiel, son of Laish, who was from Galim. New Testament NIV version John 18 25 to 40. Peter's second and third denials. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, You aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him, Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, a rooster began to crow. Jesus before Pilate. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now, it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourself and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Hallelujah. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews, gathered there and said, I find no, bi no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now, Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 68, verse 15 to 20. Mount Bashan, majestic mountain. Mount Bashan, rugged mountain. 
Why gaze in envy? You rugged mountain, at the mountain where God chooses to reign, where the Lord himself will dwell forever. The chariots of God are tens of thousands, and thousands of thousands. The Lord has come from Sinai into his sanctuary. When you ascended on high, you took many captives. You received gifts from people, even from the rebellious, that you, Lord God, might dwell there. Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is a God who saves from the sovereign Lord comes escape from death. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. Amazing scriptures today. Thank you so much for hanging around with me again today. Please, if you're here and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, it will be my utmost pleasure to lead you in this amazing prayer of salvation. Please repeat it after me, believing in your heart every word you say. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said that prayer, we're so excited to welcome you into God's family. Can you go ahead, send us a message, let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new faith walk. Glory to God. Thank you so much for being here today. Please remember to share this video with your friends, family, and loved ones. Remember to follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Facebook, same, same name, Sandra Boyo Aruleba. I look forward to another amazing day tomorrow with you. Have a blessed day today. Bye.